Okay, we've got a bunch of torsos here for you to rig up and try out some of the techniques we've been looking at. Okay, first up here we have this farmer man. His arms and legs are rigged up with blended joints. And for this guy, you can just do a simple FK rig without hip or shoulder controls, just so you can get the basics down. Don't forget to parent your torso artwork. Set the anchor point at the pelvis or set the anchor point first and then put the pin at the pelvis. It doesn't matter, just as long as the puppet pin and the anchor point occupy the same place on the pelvis. And then make sure and parent that torso artwork to the pelvis null in the case of a plain FK rig with no hip roll. You could also parent it to the cog. That would be fine too, either the pelvis or the cog or center of gravity control might be a little challenging with this guy to get the starch right in order to get a smooth bend to this very perfect rectangle. So it'll be fun to see how this one comes together. Next up we have our hipster woman here and we looked at a Bezier IK rig on her in the previous lesson. But here we're just going to have you do a regular FK rig but with hip roll and shoulder controls. Because this is a hip roll rig, you want to make sure and parent that torso artwork to the center of gravity control. Next up, we have our hipster man, and we looked at a plain FK rig with him earlier. But this time, we're going to have you do a Bezier IK rig on him with shoulder controls as well. So we're swapping out our characters and rigs here a little bit just to give you some different experiences in applying these different rig setups to different types of characters with different proportions. Okay, and last we have our dear old orange woman here who we've been looking at a lot. So for her, it's really about the experience of just working with a unipod. So for the orange woman, you can build either an FK or a Bezier IK rig completely your choice. Also, shoulder controls are also possible on her. Now you may be saying, well, gosh, she doesn't have any shoulders. Well, she doesn't have any shoulders on her torso art. She has, of course, the shoulders on her upper arms. And since this is just a really nice color to color situation here with her arms being the same color as her torso, we can still add shoulder controls to move around those upper arms and just move the shoulder in the front here just over the top of the artwork. Be a little bit limited by the collar here so you can't go too high but that would be unnatural anyway. But you could definitely get that shoulder up a ways here. You could get the shoulder down, forward, backward a little bit. And with the shoulder in back here you can get quite a range of movement. So shoulder control is also optional but something to consider. So this one's really kind of a rig it how you want it and just focus on the differences between the separate head torsos and the unipod torsos. All right, so that's it for your exercise, but we've thrown in a little bonus for those of you who just can't get enough rigging. So we've got a prepped superhero man here. We looked at him before looking at some fancy starching in the arm bonus video. But we've just got him all raw here in layers. And since we've now kind of come to the point of rigging full bodies where we've got the arms, the legs, the head, and the torso, and the only thing missing is facial rigging, we thought it'd be fun to throw you a little bit of a challenge. So if you're interested, use everything you have learned so far to rig up this entire superhero man, barring the facial rigging. Use whatever methods you think would be appropriate for the different parts of his body. You're going to be using a lot of puppet tooling with a realistic character, but he's got a mechanical hand that could maybe be more of a jointed situation. And you have the option of either a jointed hip here with the front leg or running the front leg together with the torso. Options, options, options. And it'll be a good chance for you to try out what you've learned and start practicing that very special skill in rigging, which is beginning to discern which technique is going to give you the best result for which situation. So this is a 100% bonus. You don't have to do this. If rigging four torsos up is enough, you can definitely just move on to the next lesson. But 
We've got this set up for you if you want to go crazy and push it a little further. Now one thing to note about this guy, he doesn't have those big weird ankle pieces that the superhero woman had. So most likely when you're starching him, you're going to leave a patch of stretchiness, no starch, right here at the ankle. That's what we really should have done with the superhero woman, but we just couldn't because of the artwork. So here I would recommend starching down to this ankle point and then picking the starch up again here, cross the starch over to the heel, and then leave another small patch of stretchiness right here at the ball of the foot, and then starch the tip of the toe. These feet are going to be much more friendly for puppet tooling than the superhero woman, so those won't be anywhere near the challenge that hers was. And speaking of feet, I forgot to mention that I fixed the little jointing problem that we were having with the orange woman's feet. If you recall, when we first rigged these up, we were not getting very clean joints here between the heel and the toe pieces. Well, I've gone through now and cleaned these up a little bit using the mesh warp. Just to quickly recap how you do this kind of thing, I pre-composed both the heel and toe layers. And first off, I set the opacities at 50% because these are all black, so I could see where the overlap was. And then I pre-composed each of these layers, leaving all attributes in the rig comp. And then simply applied a mesh warp, and you can see it's very, very slight, just a little bit of nudging of that ball of the foot just to clean up that edge a little bit. And I had to do it both on the heel layer and on the toe layer. But now we've got much cleaner joints. We don't have those weird little lumps and stuff sticking out. And the feet are looking a lot better. And you'll note that we've been making these kinds of little tweaks and fixes consistently throughout this process. Even a very, very well-prepared character can give you surprises and things that don't work the way you think they're going to work once they start to move around. So learn to expect these things. And After Effects gives us so many wonderful tools for manipulating 2D artwork. There's very rarely anything that can't be fixed right in After Effects. OK, so back to our superhero guy here. So enjoy rigging these up. And be sure and check your work against the solution file when you're done. In our next lesson, we'll tackle the complexity of facial rigging, and then we can start to get seriously into bells and whistles.